Hello everyone and welcome once again to Let's Play Morrowind. Last time when we left off I was in the Saran Trade House about to finally speak to Hides His Eyes for the Drunken Bounty Hunter quest. What do you want? Soul Slime, settlements in Morrowind. Rural people live in Dunmer Village style, groups of small huts centered around temple compounds. Latest rumors. Now, this is more detail. Nary Sathris said she ran into a rogue Telvanni base out in the middle of the Ashlands. Unfortunately, when she used her Almsivi intervention to escape, she failed to note her position. All she could say was that she was somewhere in the Ashlands between Foyata Mamea on the west and Foyata Asherdan on the east and north of Lake Nabea. That covers a lot of empty territory. Let's try... Dr Derek Biel. Bounty Hunter? Too much in the bottle, I think. Good pay, though. An honest man in his own way. Dranus Sarathrum. The Slave Trader. Bad man. Hunts my people down. Deserves to be dead, that one does. Hajai. Yes, the escaped slave. Hunted for many weeks, we did. Took the Bounty Hunter all around this area looking for him. Never caught him, though. No, never caught him. Hides his eyes. Yes, that is me. What can I do for you? Hides his eyes is Hajai. You found my secret, you did. I'll not try to hide it from you. I am the one the bounty hunter sing seeks. What of it? He would take me back to the slavers. That is not for me. So I dragged him around the wilderness for a while. What of it? Does he not deserve it, the drunken fool? And he paid me well. So you know my secret. What will you do with it? You will not tell, will you? Your journal has been updated. You can either say your secret is safe with me, friend, or I am honor-bound to tell BL what I have learned. If you... Say, if you keep his secret, you get five faction points with the twin lamps. If you betray his secret, or if you tell him you're going to tell BL, he attacks you, and then BL pays you 150 gold. Interestingly, if you tell him his secret is safe, and then double-cross him and tell BL anyway, you still get, you get BL's 150 gold, you wind up with minus five points to the twin lamps, and hides his eyes will attack you on sight if he ever sees you again. I'm just... There is something about slavery that I can't abide, no matter how evil I might be role-playing. So, uh, your secret is safe with me, friend. You are a good friend. I thank you. I will let others know what you have done for me today. Your journal has been updated. Small Goodbye. On outside, or is it inside? I've confronted Hides His Eyes, or Hajai, about being the escaped slave Derek Biel has been looking for. He made no attempt to deny the fact, and seemed proud to have actually gotten Biel to pay him as a guide for the... ...his true identity. I'm certainly okay with that. I've agreed not to tell anyone about Hides His Eyes being the escaped slave. It doesn't seem right to force this man back into bondage. And that completes the quest, the drunken bounty hunter. There's no need to report back to BL or anything like that. So with that all handled, we've only got two buildings left to visit in Saran. Let's go to the temple first. see who we got in here. I think we actually just have one person. Eli New Saren. Yes. What's your question, Outlander? I have things to do. Oh, they're not a fan of me. But they've got spells to buy, so let's get the disposition up above 90. And let's buy some spells. So 
So let's keep track of what spells we're able to get here. We've got Second Barrier. Dire Weakness to Fire. Dire Weakness to Frost. Dire Weakness to Magicka. Dire Weakness to Poison. Dire Weakness to Shock. Blood Despair. Almalexia's Grace. Saren's Blessing. Saintly Word. Greater Resist Poison. And you know me, I'd like to know all the spells. Fuddle, and the ever-useful Alm Civi Intervention, which I will still hold off using until I'm ready to raise up mysticism. But it's good to know that spell, if nothing else. Oh, do you have anything interesting to purchase? No, not really. All right, let's chat. Skadia Niles, Avon Oren, background. I am Alainu Saren, priest and novice of the temple. Dagothur, Derek Biel, Dranus Sarathrum, Dunmer, Empire. Empire, give to the emperor only your coin and honor only the law which is just. Ghost Fence. The Ghost Fence was created and is sustained by the divine powers of Vivek and the Tribunal, Great Houses. The Brown Party of Telvanni honors great traditions of arcane mastery of our race and deserve our respect, but they are careless in observance of temple teaching and scornful of discipline, doctrine, and obedience. Interesting. Let's do these ones. Hajai? Yes, I've heard of him. Couldn't tell you where to find him, though. Ask Dranus Sarathrim in the slave market. He's gotten to be an expert on Argodians, their language and their habits. Argonians. Argonians are cunning savage beasts incapable of enlightenment. They are blasphemous travesties of nature, with unspeakable foulness in their private and family urges. They are fit only for service, and only when guided by a stern hand can they avoid abomination. Hides his eyes. Imperial Cult. Imperial law supports and protects the Imperial Cult, but the Nine Divines are neither gods nor worthy ancestors, and their worship is just foolish superstition. Ancestors. The worst of us live long after death, and we beg our kinder ancestors to protect us from the evil ones we call ghosts and devils and demons. Latest rumors. Little advice. Little secret. Oh. We got some more new stuff here. Bad Daedra and Daedra Shrines. The Rebel Daedra, the Dark Daedra, Molag Bal, Malakath, Sheagorath, Mehrunes Dagon, in their arrogance and pride, refused to keep faith with the Tribunal. We call these Bad Daedra the Four Corners of the House of Troubles, and they continue to tempt the unwary into heresy and dark worship. Oh. Daedra Shrines. Okay, Daedra. The Daedra are our ancestors. Before the Tribunal, we worshipped the Daedra as gods, but they didn't deserve it since they harmed us as often as they helped us. When they became gods, the Tribunal became our protectors and high ancestor spirits. The good Daedra became loyal friends of the Tribunal, but the bad Daedra remained foul and treacherous. Little secret is the cutoff. Okay, good Daedra. Boethia, Mephala, and Azura are loyal friends of the Tribunal. These Daedra are the good Daedra, which we also call the Anticipations. Morrowind Lore. When you've joined one great house, you can never join any other great house. They won't trust you. So when you join a great house, make sure it's the one you want forever. My trade. I am a priest of the Tribunal Temple, an intercessor between Alm Sivi and their worshippers, caretaker of the temple and shrines, and counselor and educator for the faithful and laymen. I can tell you about the temple, the Daedra, the saints, and the ancestors. I can explain about pilgrimages and why we hate necromancy. I can also tell you something about other cults. Necromancy. Ignorant foreigners confuse our communication and reliance upon our ancestor spirits with necromancy, but ancestor veneration is holy and pious, while necromancy is godless, perverse sorcery. Nerevarine. 
Nivena Ules. Nine Divines. The official religion of the Empire, the Imperial Cult, worships the Nine Divines. The Nine Divines are the Aedra, Akatosh, Debella, Arche, Zenithar, Mara, Stendar, Kinnereth, and Julianos, and the divine god hero Tiber Septim, founder and patron of the Empire. These are indeed powerful spirits, but they are untrustworthy and unworthy of worship. Ordinators. Grandmaster Beryl Sala is the chief ordinator on Vardenfell. Other cults. The Daedric cult worship the bad Daedra. These cults and their worshippers are evil. Pilgrimages. At pilgrimage sites, the temple maintains shrines commemorating sacred events. By retracing the holy feats of saints and heroes, and by contemplating their experiences, the faithful may advance on the path of enlightenment. Saints. Each of the greater saints and lesser saints has his own proper sphere of influence, those worshippers of various walks of life that the saint has the most sympathy and affection for. Greater Saints. The greater saints of the temple listed with their proper spheres are Blessed Almalexia the Warden, Healers, Teachers, Lord Sothasil the Magus, Artificers, Wizards, Lord Vivek the Poet, Artists, Rogues, Saint Nerever the Captain, Warriors, Statesmen, and Saint Veloth the Pilgrim, Outcasts, Seekers. So what would be before lesser saints? Almalexia. Almalexia was the virtuous wife of Lord Nerever and later the consort of Lord Vivek. Saint Nerevar. Saint Nerevar, the captain, is the patron of warriors and statesmen. He united the Dunmer tribes into a great nation, but died leading the Dunmer to victory against the evil Dwemer and the traitorous house Dagoth at the Battle of Red Mountain. Dwemer. Saint Nerevar and the tribunal defeated the Dwemer in holy war and banished them from the face of the world for their blasphemies. Um, Saint Veloth. Saint Veloth taught the difference between the good and bad Daedra and won the aid of the good Daedra for his people while teaching how to deal with the bad Daedra. And then if we do lesser saints. The lesser saints of the temple are Saint Felms the Bold, Butchers Fishmongers, Saint Lothus the Pious, Tailors Dyers, Saint Maris the Peacemaker, Farmers Laborers, Saint Rorus the Martyr, Furnishers and Caravanners, Saint Erelor the Penitent, Tanners and Miners, Saint Delin the Wise, Potters Glassmakers, Saint Olms the Just, Sailors, Chandlers, Clerks, Saint Rilms the Barefooted, Pilgrims Beggars, and Saint Seren the Merciful, Brewers, Bakers, Distillers. St. Felms. St. Felms the Bold is the patron of butchers and fishmongers. This cruel warlord killed many Nord infidels who deserved killing. He couldn't read or write, but received inspiration directly from the voice of Blessed Almalexia in his head. St. Rorus. St. Rorus the Martyr is the patron of furnishers and caravanners. Captured by Argonians before the Arnesian War, Rorus refused to renounce the tribunal faith and was tortured and martyred. Vengeance for St. Rorus was a rallying cry of the Arnesian War. St. Seren. St. Seren the Merciful is the patron of brewers, bakers, and distillers. This pure but less than handsome virgin could heal all diseases at the price of taking the disease upon herself. Tough as a guar, she lived to a ripe and sprightly old age. All right, services, shrines, shrines may be found in temples, at pilgrimage sites, or in ancestral tombs. Solstheim, Sothasil, Lord Sothasil the Magus is one of the three immortal god kings of Morrowind, a pillar of the tribunal, and the patron of artificers and wizards. Sothasil was the mightiest wizard and most wise counselor of the First Council. Companion and teacher of Nerevar and Vivek, Sothasil is the light of knowledge and the inspiration of craft and sorcery. Soul Sickness Madness is a sickness in the soul. It comes from a lack of faith and a love of sin. All this talk of bad dreams and om bad omens, superstition, it's just a sign that people have abandoned the temple and fallen into greed and wickedness. Specific place. Saran. Temple. The Tribunal Temple is the native religion of civilized Morrowind. They worship three god kings, Almalexia, Sothasil, and Vivek, who are known together as the Tribunal. We usually just call it the Temple. Let's do Tribunal. 
Like loving ancestors, the tribunal guards and counsels us. Like stern parents, they punish our sins and errors. Like generous relatives, they share their bounty among the greatest and least according to their needs. Tribunal Temple. It's exactly the same. Like loving ancestors, the tribunal guards and counsels us. Like stern parents, they punish our sins and errors. Like generous relatives, they share their bounty among the greatest and least according to their needs. And finally, Vivek. At once brave and honorable and cunning and devious, Lord Vivek is a rare combination of the virtues of flamboyant adventurer and prudent statesman. Okay. We've got a level 50 locked chest here, which we actually can open. I think it's actually a wooden chest, so... Make sure I have that in my notes, just so the title's right. Anything in here I actually want? Nope. Over here we've got Homilies of Blessed Almalexia, which I think is another new book. Yes, it is. Take that one off the list and read it. The Homilies of Blessed Almalexia, Sothasil and the Scribs. Young Sothasil, while playing in the egg mines, saw a number of scribs in a deep shaft, and he began to cast stones upon them, snickering as they skittered and scattered, until one of the scribs, lifting its head up in agony, cried out to Sothasil, Please, please have mercy, little boy, for what is sport to you is suffering and death to us. And so Sothasil discovered that the idle amusements of one may be the solemn tortures of another. Lord Vivek and the Contentious Beasts A Shalk and a Kaguti were strutting back and forth in a foyata, casting aspersions of one another's looks. You are the ugliest creature alive, the Shalk told the Kaguti. No, you are the ugliest creature alive, the Kaguti told the Shalk, for each thought himself most handsome and the other most ugly. Then Lord Vivek chanced by and settled their dispute. No, you both are the ugliest creatures alive, and I will not have my pleasant sojourn spoiled by your unseemly squabbling. So he dealt them both mighty blows, shattering their skulls and silencing their argument, and went merrily upon his way. And thus Lord Vivek proved that ugliness is as much in one's manner as in one's appearance. The Boiled Kaguti it is said that if a Kagudi steps into a boiling pool, he will leap out immediately to avoid harm. But if the Kagudi is standing in a pool and a wizard slowly raises the temperature measure by measure to boiling, the Kagudi will calmly stand in place until he is boiled. Thus we see that we must be alert not only to the obvious danger, but also to the subtle degrees by which change may result in danger. The Dubious Healer once upon a time, a Telvanni issued forth from his tower and proclaimed to all the world that he was a mighty and learned healer, master of all alchemy and potions, and able to cure all diseases. Lord Vivek looked upon this wizard and listened to his boasting, then asked himself, How can you pretend to prescribe for others the cure to all diseases when you are unable to cure yourself of your own manifest arrogance and foolishness? The Guar and the Mud Crabs the Gwar were so tormented by the other creatures, they did not know where to go. As soon as they saw a single beast approach them, off they dashed in terror. One day they saw a pack of Nyx hounds ranging about, and in a desperate panic all the Gwar scuttled off towards the sea, determined to drown themselves rather than live in such a continual state of fear. But just as they got near the shoreline, a colony of mud crabs, frightened in their turn by the approach of the Gwar, scuttled off and threw themselves into the water. Truly, said one of the Guar, things are not so bad as they seem, for there is always someone worse off than you. The Wounded Netch A wounded Netch lay himself down in a quiet corner of its feeding ground. His healthy companions came in great numbers to inquire after his health, yet each one helped himself to a share of the fodder which had been placed there for his use, so that the poor Netch died not from his wounds, but from the greed and carelessness of his erstwhile friends. And so it is clear that thoughtless companions may bring more harm than help. All right, let's head over here. Check these containers out. Let's see. Definitely want grave dust and cuddle and resin and salt rice and quama egg and trauma root and wickwheat. Take the gold. Take the 
gold. Take the salt rice. All of it. Okay. Let's see about downstairs. Lock level 25. No problem. Theoretically, anyway. <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to hit jump. Let's see what we got in here. Some bread. Cool. The Cantatas of Vivek. I believe that's a new one. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so we'll give it a read. Take it off the list. The Cantatas of Vivek. The cantatas of Vivek are gospels written in the form of epic songs. They trace the evolution of Vivek from a foolish mortal into an enlightened divine. Vivek sought out experiences that tested him in every way possible, particularly in the defense and protection of his Dunmer people. And through his long life, his humility, and his unconquerable spirit, he attained the wisdom of the seven graces. The cantatas relate many stories of Vivek's experiments with challenge and risk, his failures and triumphs, his blessings of insight and good Good fortune and his debt to his partners, Almalexia the lover and Sothasil the teacher. The poetry is simple and dramatic, lyric and personal, composed to be sung or recited. The following is an excerpt from Lord Vivek's Brooding Beneath Red Mountain. The gaunt ghost fires loom as subtle shrouds, smokes and shades on the beers of Red Mountain. Arches and spires line the rock halls, dimly lit by the spirits of the dead. The blood of broken hearths and houses runs in red rivers, blossoms in fountains. Girdled round within walls of wit's glass, the shattered hosts slumber in cradles of ash. But when shall they wake? What dark crucible may kindle their souls to light? How long beneath red reeking clouds must flickering watchfires burn? How many lifetimes of labor and lament will it take to seal this restless tomb. And we have 2920 Frostfall, which is a conjuration skill book, which I do not want to read yet. As we'll be raising conjuration later to work on our intelligence attributes, so we'll just steal that one without reading it. Okay, cool. Then we got that. Let's check this closet. Nothing important. Check back here. Check under the pillow. The Book of Dawn and Dusk. That one I'm pretty sure we've read. No, we haven't. Just kidding. Oh, we'll read that one and then take it off the list. The Book of Dawn and Dusk. The Book of Dawn and Dusk is a collection of sayings and aphorisms attributed variously to the tribunals and to their saints and servants. Many of these sayings have become common cliches of everyday life in Morrowind. The following selection of slogans will illustrate many of the simplest notions of the tribunal faithful. Speak none but good of the gods. We can have no opinions about truth. Rumors flow from the house of troubles. Count only the happy hours. No child has a sinner's heart. Let faith be your only law. Fear of the fool is the beginning of wisdom. Almsivian every hour. Walk always in the presence of your lords. Comfort is given, justice is taken. Learn by serving. From the heart the light, from the head the law. Blessed Almsivy, mercy, mastery, mystery. Forge a keen faith in the crucible of suffering. Engrave upon thy eye the image of injustice. Death does not diminish, the ghost gilds with glory. Faith conquers all, let us yield to faith. Better to suffer a wrong than to do one. The heavens are in their glory, applaud. Folly secures its power to harm. Though forbidden to some, not to you. Oh, how rarely wisdom rules our hearts. Blessed are we who serve Almsivy. Three mouths sing mercy, mastery, mystery. 
Gather no seed in the fields of hell. The thrice-sealed house withstands the storm. By breath and blood protect us all. Can ghosts or justice change with time? Consider your end, mortal. Accept grace without limits. Enter the rhapsody of the god-poet. Kneel before the teacher's chair. Three hands, three hearts, three eyes. Keep no secret from your judge's scale. Forge darkness into light. Refuse neither brother nor ghost. Blessed Alm Sivi through birth, life, ghost. From glowing ashes the poet's wrath shall shine. If Vivek is for us, who can stand against us? Fate, monstrous and empty, the whirling wheel of evil. How black my heart, roasting fiercely. There you go. That appears to be it for the temple. So let's hit our last building, Oran Manor. Alrighty. Oren Manor is right over here. We'll just go in on the ground floor and see what we can find. Here on the ground floor we have Ravoso Arion. So let me just write these two down right quick. Ravoso Aryan. All right, what you got to say? I'm Ravoso Aryan. This is the village of Saran, gateway to Balur. You're looking for services? Maybe I am. What do you have? Uh, you've got some goodies that I may well be interested in. But I'll need to see if I can steal any of them first. There's a line new Saren. Finally. I'm over on my laptop pulling up uh, person pages, but let me see. What do you have that respawns? Steel arrows and steel bolts I need to refrain from stealing. Same with apprentices' lockpicks. Okay. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Well, let's look around then. We got what? A steel wakazashi, an iron wakazashi, an iron war axe, a steel short sword. That looks a lot like an iron mace. But yes, it is. That is a dire shard <laughs> blade. Cast when strikes. That's a shock bite battle axe. Quick cast. Out, Lander. I haven't much time. Which is cast when used. That I actually do want, because it'll be useful for raising enchant. Let's see if we can nick it. You in Too bad. Speak traveler. And over here, Telvani Bug Musk, Mazda in Grief. Okay, there's nothing behind the counter I need. That's good. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. And just spin him around. Should be able to take the axe now. Yeah, anything cast on used is going to help us raise enchant faster, which is why I'm interested. An extravagant shirt, oh, but I already have an exquisite shirt. Gloves, not interested. Steel helm, extravagant robe, Nordic fur, expensive pants. No, no, no. 
I do want this hunter's belt. I'll let you know when we're ready to raise enchants, and I'll probably do it off screen because it's super grindy. But, okay, that's all good. What do we have over here? Netch leather, of course. Black anther. Emerald actually has a restore health effect. That does interest me. Black lichen, no. Ruby, no. Gold canet, no. Shalk resin, no. Ashyam, yes. Here is the Eastern Provinces. What I believe is a new book. Yes, it is. Let's give it a read. The Eastern Provinces impartially considered. And even if we overlook the dubious moral and legal justifications for hundreds of years of occupation of these two provinces, what economic or military benefits can we derive from Morrowind and Black Marsh? Indeed, a few beneficiaries of imperial monopolies in the provinces do profit from exploitation of their wealth and resources. But does the empire as a whole benefit? Hardly. The vast machineries of the imperial bureaucracies cost far more to maintain than can be recovered in duties and taxes, and the cost of establishing and maintaining the garrisons of the imperial legion in the far-flung wilderness posts of these provinces would be cost-effective only if there were evidence of a military threat from the east, but no such evidence exists. No army of Morrowind or Black Marsh has ever threatened the security of any other imperial province, let alone the security of Cyrodiil itself. In fact, a greater threat to imperial security lies in the idle legions that the taxpayer spends thousands of drakes to support. The generals of these legions, facing no enemies or opposition within the borders of their provinces, may look with ambition to the west. With their loyal veteran troops and coffers fattened by friendly monopolists, they become unpredictable political factors in the uncertainties surrounding the imperial succession. If the occupation of Morrowind and Black Marsh were motivated by idealistic aspirations, perhaps there might lie some justification for bearing the burden of empire. Just a second, taking notes. But consider the shame of the Empire's mute acceptance to the unspeakable practice of slavery in Morrowind. Instead of using our Imperial legions to free the wretched Khajiit and Argonian slaves from their Dark Elf masters, we pay our troopers to protect the indefensible institution of slavery. Within the ebony mines of Morrowind, bloated monopolists under Imperial charters exploit slave labor to harvest the outrageous profits assured by rampant graft and corruption. Consider the colossal arrogance of our proposition to bring peace and enlightenment to the East, when in fact we have only brought our armies into lands who have never threatened us, and when we have only exploited the most shameful and evil practices we have found in Morrowind and Black Marsh simply to enrich the friends and flatterers of the Imperial family. Impartially considered, our occupation of the Eastern provinces is morally corrupt, militarily indefensible, and economically ruinous. The only conclusion is that we should disband the Eastern Legions, withdraw the Imperial bureaucracies and monopolists from the East, and give these ancient lands and peoples their freedom. Only by doing so may we hope to preserve the fragile ideals and fortunes of Western culture. And here is Grasping Fortune, which I don't believe we've read yet. This is... Each faction in the game has a sort of recruitment manual. I think I've, we've done For My Gods and Emperor for the Imperial Cult, and I think we've seen Ordo Legionis. This is the one for Great House Hlalu. So let's read it and take it off the list. Grasping Fortune by Sergio Hlalu Drambero. I am a counselor of House Lalu and choose to write this short guide for those who seek to understand us or join us. House Lalu is the most open and modern of the Great Houses. We are the only Great House who has embraced the irresistible tides of Imperial law and custom. And thus we have profited by the Empire's new policies, rising from obscurity as the greatest of the Houses. In the great wind of progress, tradition cannot stand. The Redoran may surpass us on the field of battle, but when the dust clears, they will find themselves indebted to us. The Telvanni may know many arcane secrets, but they fight among themselves more than against each other, and they cannot adapt to the ways of the Empire. 
Ancient and powerful though a Telvanni wizard may be, no individual can withstand the march of history. The Indoral are loved by the people for their gifts and donations, but when the money runs dry, will the people remember? The dress know how to make money, but they have not learned how not to make enemies. Grasp fortune by the forelocks. When you see your chances, seize them. When you see a chance to turn a profit, take it, but do not follow money blindly. There is value in reputation, more than many young Hlalu realize. This value must be carefully balanced against the more tangible coins in any deal. Theft and murder are bad for business. You can steal from someone, but will he trade with you after that? You can't bargain with a dead man. There are many ways to do business. In House Lalu, you must be fast and agile. You must be able to keep up with business and with the times. You must be able to speak quickly and convincingly. You must be able to trade with the best of merchants and make a profit. You must learn to protect your own property by securing it with hidden chests, locks, and even traps. And when confrontation is unavoidable, it is best to fight quickly in comfortable light armors with short blades, or to fight from a distance with a marksman's weapons. Then, reader, would you seize this opportunity to join House Lalu? Would you have yourself be counted among the victors in the race for success? Then submit yourself for examination at the Balmora Council Manor. If you have the skills, you will be welcome. And if you have the will, you may serve House Lalu and advance in the ranks, for above all things, House Lalu prizes initiative and ambition. We won't be joining Lalu, of course, but there's their recruitment manual. I want salt rice. I'll take the iron arrows. Those are okay to steal. They aren't respawning. <sighs> Don't care for any of that. Moon sugar. Nah. Quama eggs. Hound meat. Bowls. Okay, we're good. Let's head upstairs. Now this is an important moment. Well, first let's try this door. All right, that's Serio Avon Oren himself. We'll get to him what in a minute. Want? First, let's go down here. This other room, we got bread, comberry, a little bit more bread. I don't think there's much else I'm going to care for. Nothing in that closet. I'm guessing this must be Ravoso's bedroom. Even though she... Because this is Morrowind, they uh, stay in the same spot 24-7, but that's all right. Oh, here we go. Chokeweed, Comberry. No, no. Grave Dust, yes. Salt Rice, yes. Scales, yes. Scrib Jelly, yes. Scuttle, yes. Trauma Root, yes. Salt Rice. Hound Meat. Scuttle. Ash Yam. Muck. And a little bit of loose gold. Alright, good. Let's go upstairs now. What do you want? There's a door outside. Inside the drawers. We got nothing important. Nothing under the pillow. Lives of the Saints, Saryoni's Sermons, and the Book of Dawn and Dusk. We've read all of those already. Over here, we've got the House of Troubles, which we've also already read. And that just leaves Serio Avon Oran. Let's loot his room first. He's chowing down on rat meat, which is weird. But I do want his ash yam and his crab meat and his bread and his quama egg. And that other little piece of bread. There's another door out to Saran. Let's stick behind him for now. Let's move this pillow. Let's check this I will closet. But make it quick. Okay, see, this is important. In here.
Those are important. And that's actually end game gear once we're able to enchant it up all nice like. We're going to be in pretty good shape. Of course, I don't want to get caught. I was going to say, of course, I don't want to get caught stealing anything. Let's see if we can turn him around. I already have an exquisite belt. But I want that second exquisite ring. I want the exquisite robe. We can lose the extravagant one now. And then we're all set. Ooh, yes. How fancy. All right, let's talk to Avon Oran now. This is an important character, actually. Alrighty. First we'll talk to him. What do you want? Solstheim? That's all he has, but if we barter with him, you will notice, very importantly, all of this gear restocks. He sells restocking journeyman's lockpicks, and much more important, restocking master's lockpicks. We're going to want some of that for sure. Now let me check and see. I don't know yet what, if anything, I'll be able to unlock with our current skills with a master's lockpick. Let me find out. Otherwise, that's it for Saren. We're done here. Let me see if we can do... Quickly, I have much time. Uh, 75 level locks. Saran Slave Market's an easy place to check on that. We just gotta wait until the... Uh, our fatigue's full. With a master's lock pick, 75 is doable, which means 70 is too. So there's a whole bunch of stuff we need to go unlock. And you don't really need to worry about conserving uses because uh, you've got a restocking source here with Avon Oran. What I'm going to do first is run back to Pelagiad just to offload. We'll deal with that cliff racer whenever it gets to me. I'm not too worried. Oh, but I will do this first, actually. Before I forget, let's see. I think I have more scuttle than anything else as far as Restore Fatigue potions go. Make some bread, or make Restore Fatigue potions with bread, and crab meat, and hound meat. And large quama eggs. And small quama eggs. All right. Next, I'll make some uh, cure disease potions: chokeweed, grave dust, muck, red lichen. Next, we'll do levitate. I know I've got a uh, trauma roots. I can do it with that, and I can do it with the Racer Plume. Hackalo can actually go with these pearls to do water breathing. That's neat. And then for... Oh, Kwama Cuddle is also water breathing. I forgot that. Neat. Alright, next. I want to do... Oh, I can do one more Cure Disease. I got Red Lichen and I got Willow Anther. Then I'm going to use Salt Rice. 
and work my way through all my restore healths. That would be Corkball Brute, Emerald, Marshmallow, Resin, and Wickweed. Okay, good. Now, we're in better shape. I'll take that rat meat just to sell off. He's tracking us. It's gonna be a bit though. want that racer plume, I'll go ahead and make a levitation potion out of it in the trauma root. Now we'll repair stuff. We'll quickly quaff somewhere in here. <laughs> We're going to find a restore fatigue potion. There we go. Notice, notice how much more powerful my potions just got. My intelligence is still only at 50, but with 100 alchemy, the real, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The real bang for my buck in terms of powering up my potions is definitely coming from having better equipment. The duration on this Restore Fatigue is going to be a hell of a lot longer, too. And that's just going to get more and more pronounced the better our apparatus gets. So just pay attention to that. Alright, so we're going to do... I'm going to end the video after the offload is done. I'll tell you what I'm going to do off screen I obviously still don't have a good way to um, work on my magic skills because I still don't have a good way to restore magicka but with the restocking masters lock picks and the ability to even with with a hundred agility 71 luck even with only 20 in the actual security skill we are at least able to open up locks all the way up to level 75. So I'll uh, recap for you how many of those locks we've run into. There was a set level 70 lock in Sedanine to the basement of Ariel's trade house, which we'll unlock. There are several level 75s in Pelagiad, two chests inside Fort Pelagiad, three chests inside Ullernil the armorer shop, armorer's shop. In Saran, there were chat 75 locked chests at Rald's Oriel Trader, Ibarnadad Asirnarari Apothecary, and Golden Bellaram Pawnbroker. And in addition to that, there were four level 75 locked doors inside the slave market. So because it's almost certainly going to involve a good deal of tedium, to deal with those, I'll do that off screen, and I won't, uh, I won't do anything besides unlock them, and then on screen, we'll check out what's in all the chests and behind all the doors together so you can see it. So let's see, we'll put the iron arrows in the stack, we'll drop off the silver throwing stars, we'll drop off the enchanted gear, although now I've got two shock bite battle axes they actually should stack and they do that's awesome steel broadsword of hewing goes right no not on the ground come on the steel broadsword of hewing goes right here with the others the ebony darts which i almost missed go over here the hunter's belt goes right here the 
soul gems. Remember, we did find several soul gems in with, uh, oh, what's his name? In Raoul's Oriole's shop. They're all empty, so they go here with the other empties. Nice and distinct from the others. We've got one skill book we're saving that we'll put right here. Um, looks like we've got a f maybe a few more potions to make. I go Red Lichen and Willow Anther. Sure enough, I'm able to create two more. That's nice. Scuttle, I'll keep with me. Scrib Jelly, I'll stash. Um, I'll do Water Walking with this, uh, these scales and this Violet Caprinus. And I'll put it back. I said Salt Rice and Scuttle I'll hold on to. Netch Leather has a stack to go into. Hackle Low. I'll make one water breathing right quick with a Rusula. Then put the rest of the Rusula back. Fire Petals have a stack they go in. As do Calm Berries. And Ash Yams. Excellent. The rat meat is just for sale. That's all good. Let's drop potions off over here on the bench. Any I don't actually want to keep with me anyway. Just probably most of them. I'll need one cure blight and cure disease at a time. Otherwise we're just stacking. Which is still fine. Flynn is just for sale. Levitate. Take it when I need it. There's another stack of Cure Common Disease. Restore Fatigue. I want to keep 10 on me, like usual. There they are. Well, nope, just kidding. I'd rather have one nice, discreet stack of 10. So, I'll do it this way. Find a stack of over 12, or of over 10, like this one, and just keep it. And the rest go down here. It's getting to the point where I maybe have more than I need, at least with this particular potion type. Restore health, wonderful. Keep 10 of those, so we got a nice stack. Use the rest. There's water breathing. Now, if you think the potions are getting unwieldy, I won't deny it, they are. But eventually, once we're able to use spells, the only potions I'll bother carrying from then on will be Restore Magicka. Everything else will be able to more or less resolve on its own. Alright, so let's see here. wanted to make sure that I didn't have a... Uh, didn't screw up by skipping the bone mold gear in there, and indeed I did not. Droog Curus. Now where's my helmet? Orcish Helm. You can see Droog is substantially better even than Orcish. And we got our pauldrons. Everything's good. Over here. Show me my right bracer. Iron! <laughs> yeah, we'll replace that with ebony. That's certainly an upgrade. And finally, show me short blades. I've got a silver shard blade. I'm going with a glass dagger. 
as an upgrade for sure. All right, good. Good, good, good. We're out of here. So, let's sell stuff off to Ulernil and Ormebestian. Quickly, Outlander. I have one. And then I'm going to start and... Here he is. You can have the Silver Shard Blade, the Bone Mold Curus, the Iron Right Bracer, and even, if you want it, the Orcish Helm. Um, okay. I'm listening. Let's try the Orc for the Orcish yeah. Helm. No, no. There's no need for that. Just sell her the helmet. There we go. Good. Now we'll go visit Mabestian, just because there are a couple of other little things to sell off. Any time now. Take the flin, the rat meat, and we're good with everything else. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to run back to Sedanine. Actually, no, i tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to run back to Sedanine. So, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 locks at minimum that we can now open. There's one level 70 in Sedanine. I'm going to do it first because it should be the easiest and there's an off chance that it'll be enough to give me an extra rank in security. And from there I'm going to come back to Pelagiad. I'm going to open two level 75 chests and one level 75 wooden chest inside Ulernil's shop. I'm going to open two, a wooden chest and a chest inside Fort Pelagiad, each of which has a level 75 lock. Then I'm going to go to Saran, where I will unlock a chest at Golden Bellaram Pawnbroker, a chest at Rald's Oriel Trader, a wooden chest at Ibarnadad Asirnarari Apothecary, and four doors in the Saran Slave Market, all four of which also have level 75 locks. When all of that unlocking is done, we'll pop back in for the next video, pick up where we left off, and explore what's behind all of those doors and inside all of those chests. Until then, this has been Let's Play Morrowind. I'm just letting my fatigue fill up. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, make it quick. please consider clicking an ad, liking, sharing, or subscribing, any or all of which really help me out. Regardless, please know that I really do appreciate the time you spend watching and hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.